You supposed to be running around here taking care of this baby, and she four years old. She's supposed to be learning her nursery rhyme, and all you can sing is eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Who's the daddy you don't know? He was there, and he was dancing. Not entertaining, just dancing. I was there, and I actually did my mating call. <laughs> How does that make you feel, Jerome? Just running over there. <laughs> I'm going to be at, um, knock on the right window. She was telling the person knock on the right window. And... This is the address to her house. Oh, so she was giving somebody her address and telling them to knock on the window. Yeah, basically, and you sound saw like booty this. calling me. Ms. Vaught says that Mr. Lindsay abruptly ended their relationship due to paternity doubts over their daughter, Shelby. Mr. Lindsay says he was completely correct to do this, as Ms. Vaught committed paternity fraud by claiming he's Shelby's dad. He's also requesting a lie detector test to prove that Ms. Vaught is indeed a cheat. Those are incredible claims Mr. Lindsay's making. Let's see if they have any truth to them. Ms. Vaught, well, the stakes are pretty high today. Yes, they are, Your Honor. Explain. I wouldn't place a baby on someone that I didn't no, like didn't believe was her father. You get what I'm saying? I have two previous kids before him and my children have both have the same father. And if I felt in my heart that he wasn't the father or if it was the second the guest of him being a father, I would have told him from the door. That seems reasonable, but that's what a lot of women who find themselves in paternity court usually say. And sometimes it turns out to be a lie. Ms. Vaught says she and Mr. Lindsay used to have a great relationship for around two and a half years and things were very rosy. Well, that was until Mr. Lindsay started listening to hearsay and started doubting that he was the father of Shelby. What happened, Mr. Lindsay? She says you all were good, good friends. Were you in a relationship? Were you just dating or were you committed? No, we was good friends. We was in a relationship. Everything was going good. Today, I feel like she got, she too friendly. She too friendly to me, man. Too she too friendly. friendly. Too friendly? Too friendly. Remember, ladies, if you get too friendly with other people, your man may think he's not really the father of your child and would expect you to totally accept that as a sane response to being friendly with other people. That's just the way of the world out here, folks. Don't forget, Mr. Lindsay here and Ms. Too Friendly with other guys. Vaught were sleeping together without protection for the entirety of their relationship. So Ms. Vaught may have been too friendly with other guys, but that certainly didn't stop Mr. Lindsay from sleeping with her without protection. Yeah, I know. When we first met, everything was going good. We was doing good. Then little stuff started popping up with her. What popped up? Her talking to people. Some stuff popped up in her. She with her, can't um, have a conversation, Mr. She, Lindsay. She can have a Your conversation. Your Honor, he talks. But he, how many, how many conversations are you gonna have with Mel? Apparently, at some point, Ms. Vaught had told a man on Instagram to knock on the right window when he came to see her. That sounds shady, to be fair. But Ms. Vaught says that happened way before she got serious with Mr. Lindsay. If she's telling the truth, then we've got to doubt Mr. Lindsay's argument here. First of all, why would his first cause of doubt be? before he even started dating Ms. Vaught. That generally means the defendant doesn't have a good enough reason to doubt paternity. So, Mr. Lindsay, besides her on Instagram and you see her telling somebody to knock on the window, what else? She told me the baby wasn't mine. So what I'm supposed to do? And I said, Your Honor, I said that out of anger because for him to say, because he would say to me, Your Honor, oh, I don't feel that's my baby. I don't feel that's my baby. Why would you say that when I'm loyal to you? Mr. Lindsay might not have had a good reason before, but he certainly had one once Ms. Vaught told him Shelby wasn't his. Saying that to your baby daddy is kind of like ringing a bell. Once you ring it, you cannot unring it. Most men will never forget something like that, and even if that doubt wasn't there before, it's going to start growing. Well, Mr. Lindsay has another reason for doubt. Mr. Lindsay, what are you saying? The dates don't add up. The dates Explain. don't add up. If the baby was conceived in September, that would mean December, February, we would have had to be together. We wasn't together on them days. Yeah. What is that, Mr. Lindsay? This is a calendar right here. Ron, will you hand that you to me, please? Please. Just to show you that the dates don't add up. It don't make sense to me. Your Honor, yes, please. You have a calendar here, sir? Yes, yes he went over and above. That's a really good and coherent point, but Ms. Vaught says she can distinctly remember being with Mr. Lindsay and having passionate intercourse with him on New Year's Eve. She says she's certain that was the night Shelby was conceived. Mr. Lindsay says he wasn't there and that Ms. Vaught is mistaking him for another man. Well, if that's the case, then he cannot possibly be the father, right? It would have been December 31st. That that would have been within the window of time. Exactly. And so, Mr. Lindsay, you're saying that's incorrect, that you were not with her? I was not there. I don't know if she got me confused with somebody. And you see, that's disrespectful there. right there, because if we were oh, together right. two and a half years, how could you open your mouth and say something like that? And that hurts your feelings. And it does, because I love this man, and he know I love him. Ms. Vaught has a great point here, because if Mr. Lindsay really felt this way, he should have said something a while ago. She says Mr. Lindsay was always there for her and Shelby. She says he signed 
signed his name on her birth certificate, was with her during delivery, and was with her every step of the way during the pregnancy. If he did that, why is he trying to back out now? Anyway, the results of the lie detector test are out, and it doesn't look really good for Ms. Vaught. Ms. Vaught, you were asked, did you have sexual contact with the man who sent you an Instagram message about which window to knock on? You said no. The lie detector determined you were being deceptive. True. That, that I, mean, I was you lying, was lying. not telling the truth. I was lying? That's what that means, deceptive. Okay, you was lying. It. Oh, at this point, you'd probably think Shelby doesn't belong to Mr. Lindsay, and Ms. Vaught has been lying all this while. And that's a good guess to make, especially as she failed the lie detector test. But this is paternity court, and things aren't so straightforward. Let's see what the DNA test results have to say about Shelby's paternity. Mr. Lindsay, you are are the father. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm so happy. Can I have that, please? Can I have that? Oh, you yes, want to put because... this up in the house? Yep, I'm not sure I am. You gonna put this on the refrigerator? Every family member. I can only imagine what it feels like, it and hurts. people are questioning you, questioning the baby. Father won't be fully attached. Constant argument. Ms. Graham is certain that her on-again, off-again fiance is her four-year-old child's father, and just wants the court to set the record straight. The man in question, Mr. Scott, believes the exact opposite and says he has strong proof for his claims. And what's that proof? Well, Mr. Scott says there's always a twin in his family, and Ms. Graham's child, Taylor, isn't a twin. That's right, it's the no-twin paternity hypothesis. So, Ms. Graham, you say you need today's results to save your relationship? Tell the court why. Um, basically, we're planning a wedding, and we're getting in arguments every day about the paternity. He knows he's the father. He's new since. I've told him several times that he's the father, and he still tries to deny it. And I just want this resolved today. Mr. You Scott? Are... I am not the father. Before this paternity issue came up, Ms. Graham and Mr. Scott had plans to get married. Mr. Scott had even proposed. So how did they get from almost getting married to paternity court? Well, we need a DNA test. I mean, how do we get how do we get from being engaged and being happy, planning a wedding, because to all of a sudden this DNA thing looming over our because heads? Because I want to move on with it, but not if Taylor Rose is not my daughter. I don't want so to move on with So if Taylor's not your biological child, you're not getting married. Hell no. Excuse me. Oh. So not only is Taylor's paternity on the line, but the entire relationship and future marriage is on the line too. These are big stakes. And with stakes as huge as this, we should expect both parties to be as honest as they can be, right? What happened during this on-off thing that produced this paternity question? It was him. I know the night that I conceived. I definitely know the night I conceived. We, we went down to um, Orlando. We got a room. We had sex for about a week, nonstop. He knows exactly which weekend I'm talking about. They'd gotten engaged even before the child was conceived, but once Ms. Graham told Mr. Scott that she was pregnant, the issue started coming up. But that doesn't make sense. If they were going to get married anyway and were sleeping together without protection, why would a pregnancy announcement complicate things? Well, that's where it gets complicated. Your Honor, I found out that she was pregnant prior to her telling me. The reason how I found out was when I went back into the house, I was searching through paperwork, cleaning up, and when I cleaned up, I saw something from the doctor's office, well, and it said that she was like six weeks pregnant, uh -huh. and we only been back together for like two weeks. Oh, so Mr. Scott says they might have been on and off, but the dates certainly don't add up. Mr. Scott says he didn't tell her about seeing the paperwork and waited for her to break the news to him herself. Ms. Graham, on the other hand, says she only hesitated before telling me Scott about the pregnancy because it was her first child and she panicked. How believable is that to you? So, of course, I was a little scared. I didn't know what my options were. So after I told him, I'm expecting him to be excited. And he just, oh, that's not my child. Like, it was just like a big mess. The one person in the world who I was expecting to embrace this turned into my enemy. Well, Mr. Scott thinks Ms. Graham hesitated before telling him because she wasn't sure she wanted to make him the child's father. Can you really blame him? Most men would think the same if they found such paperwork. Anyway, Ms. Graham must have a coherent explanation for this mismatch in dates, right? I just wanted to have time. I had just graduated. I just wanted to have time for myself to see what my options were before I had him, you know, down my throat, do this, do this, do this. So once I did make the decision to keep the child, I brought it to him. You know, I was very afraid. Like, I, you know, like I said, I just had graduated. I'm just, my life is just beginning to take off. That explanation was many things, but it wasn't coherent and definitely didn't satisfy
satisfy the question. It seems Ms. Graham is playing a game of ostrich here and is hiding her head in the sand. Anyway, Judge Lake asks the question again, and it Ms. Graham does the same thing. Mr. Scott is saying that during the window of time when this baby would have been conceived, you all were on the out. Just because you were still having sex with him doesn't, of course, change the fact that you could have been having sex with somebody else. Was there someone else that you were dating or seeing? Not before, not before I was pregnant, no. Now we are getting somewhere. Ms. Graham says her new boyfriend after she got pregnant was the one with her when she got pregnant. She also says that Mr. Scott somehow came to the hospital after she'd given birth and caused a scene. Mr. Scott made a scene by screaming that Ms. Graham cheated on him and Taylor isn't his child because she's not a twin and all of that. But if he knew that Taylor wasn't his child, what was even the point? of making a scene, it's ridiculous. She was in the hospital and had the baby. I didn't want that stress. I had stress. to find out from someone else. I did not want that stress, and Which I was stress? right. Which stress? I was right. He came up there, and he did every single thing that I knew he was going to do, which is why I did not call him. I you didn't tell him at all. Frank you honor, told him. She did call me and she said, you are not the father. Wait, what? Okay, even if she did call Mr. Scott and tell him that, why would it matter? He already said that the baby wasn't his. Why would her confirming that enrage him so much? And what's up with this twins business? You honor, twins it's run in my family. Taylor Rose is not a twin. Well, <laughs> every child born in a family that has twins won't be a twin. Well, I know my sister didn't have any twins. I know I will be the one to have twins. Taylor Rose is not my child. Where are you getting this information from, Mr. Scott? It's what I know. How do you know it? From my family history. I know. <laughs> oh. So it's biology against Mr. Scott. Let's see who comes out on top. Does Taylor Rose belong to Mr. Scott or someone else? The DNA test results have our answers, and it might shock you. Mr. Scott, you are not the father. Thank you, Your Honor. I already knew I wasn't. Jerome, can you go see if you can try to get Miss Graham? Stop. Could I speak with her for a moment? No, just get let let her have a minute. Let her have a minute. Yes, ma'am. You ain't gotta get all silly. Yes, ma'am. If you know something in your heart and that's what you truly feel, you stand respectfully as a man, you just get the result. Mr. Wilson is sure he isn't the biological father of Ms. Butler's two daughters, four-year-old Zariah and 19-month-old Neanna. He says Ms. Butler was sleeping with everyone who could get her to be horizontal and that the babies are definitely not his. Ms. Butler, of course, denies this completely and says that both children definitely belong to Mr. Wilson. Let's see about that. A liar, cheating all the time, had multiple um, guys running out of the house. Um, all on the internet, I mean, you know, um, go to the apartment, everybody talking about who she messing with. So you say I... these kids aren't yours? No, they're not mine. They're not mine, not at all. Well, many men have arrived at paternity court with even more certainty than Mr. Wilson here and have been proven wrong. Full disclosure here, Mr. Wilson is 48 and Ms. Butler is just 25. So maybe Mr. Wilson just thinks Ms. Butler's a cheat because she hangs out with people of her age. Maybe that's just the case, but Mr. Wilson disagrees. You sure this is not a situation where you may feel like Ms. Butler is out there doing her thing when really she's not because of the no. age difference? No, 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 no. Um, age will make you a hoe. Age My don't make you a hoe. All right. Okay. Okay, okay, Mr. Wilson. Maybe you've got a point, but you've got to prove all these allegations you're making. First, let's start with Zaria, since there are two children here. Why do you think Ms. Butler here is a cheat? You must have some really good reasons to think she was sleeping with other men when Zaria was conceived, right? Around the time Zaria was conceived, wh where were you in your relationship? Um, she was living at home with her parents at the time, and, um, one time I go up to her job to see her at work, take her some lunch, and um, I seen her get out of another guy's car. And I got a cell phone, and I seen that they've been in, she been in a whole nother relationship with this other guy. Oh, it looks like Ms. Butler isn't a completely innocent party here. But here's the good thing. Dear Ms. Butler has a perfect explanation for her behavior. At the time Zariah was conceived, you thought you all were committed. I thought so. But you, we wasn't living together, so it was kind of different, though. Oh, you can't be in a committed relationship unless you live together? I mean, I did love him, though. I really did, but... That sounds really bad, Ms. Butler. But at least it was a one-time thing, right? It never happened after that, right? Well, wrong. Um, didn't want us to be together because of age difference. Okay. You know, I understand that, you know, um... She's seen the naked pictures of other guys. The same oh. picture she sent me. So you went through her phone and you saw the same picture she'd send you. Yes, the, the sexy other guy. picture she sent him to somebody else. Yes, even when we were living together, she was doing the same thing. Were you double dipping on the pictures, Miss Butler? I was triple dipping. 
quadruple tripping. It's not often you see a man accuse a woman of cheating in paternity court, and she clearly admits to it. Ms. Butler is one honest woman. Well, at least she's honest about these allegations. But Mr. Wilson isn't done yet. He has some more things to say. You said something um, about you sh you caught her at work? Yeah, um, I, I was going to take a lunch, and um, she worked late, so I was going to take a lunch, you know, being being a good man, and nobody can find her. I can find her at work. I looked up, she getting out of the car with this other dude and bumped right into me. She got her head down and bumped right into me. And that's when she dropped the phone, I picked up the phone. And Ms. Butler, true to form, admits that this happened too. She says she did meet the guy and tried to sleep with him, and they tried it a couple of times, but never actually did it. What does that even mean, you may ask? Well, Ms. Butler says the guy never finished, so they just slept together without finishing a couple of times. That sounds reasonable and totally doesn't sound like cheating. All right, so you find out you're pregnant with Zariah, you tell him you're pregnant, he immediately says he has doubts. You say you don't have doubts, you know that Zariah is his child because you just know. Yeah, because I just know, because we will always have sex, like, all the time. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. That's it, folks. Mr. Wilson says he knows Zaria isn't his because he's caught Miss Butler cheating on him several times. Miss Butler says she knows the child is his because, well, she just knows. And that they had intercourse multiple times without condoms. This is such W conundrum, and only the DNA test results can solve it. Let's see what the results have to say. Mr. Wilson, you are not the father. Told you. Are not? Yeah, she said it. I'm not the daddy. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. That's not crazy. Zariah? Yeah, she's not my baby. You better go make some phone calls. <laughs> The incredible thing about this entire episode is that Ms. Butler just keeps smiling throughout. It's like this doesn't bother her in the least. It doesn't matter to her at all. Thankfully, Judge Lake calls her out on that. I don't think I've ever That's seen a young woman stand in a courtroom and be so cavalier about sleeping with everybody that she feels like. And you supposed to be running around here taking care of this baby, and she four years old, she's supposed to be learning her nursery rhyme, and all you can sing is eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Who's the daddy you don't know? This episode is for show business. On one side, we've got Ms. Reynolds and her daughter. Ms. Reynolds claims that Mr. Fleechin, who's dressed like a black Elvis Presley, is her daughter's father. She says she has known this for the past 20 years and hopes paternity court reveals the truth today. Mr. Fleetian says he doesn't remember ever sleeping with Miss Reynolds, and as such, it's impossible that her daughter belongs to him. So, Ms. Reynolds, what was the nature of your relationship with the defendant? We didn't have a relationship. I met him at a, a sex toy party, and he was the he was the stripper. He was the entertainment. And, yes. Teddy bear. Yes. What? What? Do human beings have a mating call? This is paternity court, not National Geographic. Why would Ms. Reynolds even say that in front of her child? Hopefully, she doesn't do the mating call in court, right? Wait, she doesn't do it, right? He was there and he was dancing, not entertaining, just dancing. And um, I was there and I actually did my mating call. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> How does that make you feel, Jerome? Just running over there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> At least Ms. Reynolds' daughter can go home after court safe in the knowledge that she's heard her mother's mating call. How many of you can say the same? None of you? Exactly. Well, back to the case. So, when you were chills. at the club, you hit that note. I did. Maybe a couple of nights later, or maybe a week or so, he gave me a call after hours, booty calling out. And um, he said he was going to come through, and he did. He slid through. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Maybe about five times. I can remember three exactly. Wow, that just sounds crazy. Do you know what would be crazier? Mr. Fleetin saying he doesn't remember any of this ever happening. So, Mr. Fleetin, do you remember sleeping with Ms. Reynolds? No, ma'am. I have no recollection of ever having a sexual encounter with Miss Mary. But I'm unforgettable. Well, do you remember her mating call? Hit that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember hearing that one night? <laughs> No bell. <laughs> Okay, there are three options. It's either Mr. Fleechin slept with so many women during his heydays that he honestly can't remember sleeping with Ms. Reynolds, or Ms. Reynolds is ashamed to admit that her mating call isn't really that convincing, or someone here is straight up lying. So, how did we get here? The story will blow your mind as it did mine. I was dating one of her 
daughter's friends, and she recognized me, and... I'm sorry, no disrespect, babe, no disrespect. But like I say, today I'm here to find out if I'm Keisha's biological father. <laughs> so the court was able to obtain photos of each of you from back in the day. Take a look at the picture, Mr. Fleeton, of Ms. Reynolds. This is a lot to take in. So, back to option one. Maybe Mr. Fleechin slept with so many people that he can't remember them, but Mr. Fleechin disagrees with that theory. So the court was able to obtain photos of each of you from back in the day. Take a look at the picture, Mr. Fleeton, of Ms. Reynolds. Do you remember a woman look like that? No, ma'am. Have you ever had sex with somebody and then didn't remember it? I remember all my sexual encounters. When Ms. Reynolds got pregnant, she was on and off with her ex. She thought that the baby belonged to her ex, but when her child was born, she realized that he was a carbon copy of Mr. Fleeshin. But somehow she was able to convince her ex that the baby was his. And he actually finally came to my house and we talked about it, and I told him that Kiesa could possibly be his child. And he said he didn't remember sleeping with me. And at that moment, I said, oh, well, you know, so taking it to my grave at that point. So you basically were telling him to protect your daughter. Exactly. Okay, that's not as insane as the worst things we've seen on paternity court, but it's still really mad. Kezia, the daughter in question, says her mother's ex was always the man she saw as her father, but he was never really in her life, and she didn't like that at all. If by chance is my biological daughter, if I would've knew back then, she would've had a total. Since I met Kezia, for the last six months, I've been there. She called, I'm not busy, I'm there. Her birthday party, I was there. I've been there since, you know, the last six months since I found out. But how did Mr. Fleechin get back with Ms. Reynolds? He'd said that he didn't even remember sleeping with her. So how did he go from that to having such a deep connection with Kezia? I was walking out of a clothing store. She was going in to the clothing store and I just seen myself in her. Mm. And I stepped to her and I said, <laughs> I look like, you look like you could be my baby. And I guess she went back home to her mom and, and so does she met. Wow, that's moving. Well, let's see whether this is true. Is Mr. Fleechin the father of Kezia, as her mother claims? Or is there something else happening here? Mr. Fleechin, you are not the father. I'm very sorry, Kezia. <sighs> you okay? Here, yeah, baby. Of course. Anyway, baby, I'm always be. 